Chapter 58 Jesus' Teachings to Become Universal Property But I say to them, Blessed are you all for believing that the Son of Man has gone forth from the Father in heaven and has come into this world to raise up the fallen and redeem the captive. But beware of proclaiming any of the special signs seen from me to anyone, because this would be a double calamity. The first half, on hearing same, would be offended, not only disbelieving what they heard, but declaring you for fools, casting aspersion on you everywhere. For one raging blind is more dangerous than a hundred seeing ones. The other gullible half, however, would receive your witness superficially and ultimately put such fetters in itself as to preclude any voluntary action. And this would mean killing man's free spirit. However, the teachings you have heard, spread them further to your friends and acquaintances. Since my words are an everlasting truth, which alone can free every person who accepts them in himself, makes them a guideline for his life, and thereby recognises that they are an everlasting truth out of God, which is, was, and always will be the being and the everlasting life of each person who carries such enlivened in himself. But there shall unfortunately be many who will refuse to hear and accept such truth, and persecute it like an enemy, and others shall flee it like deathly pestilence for fear of the earth's mighty. But these doing so shall not inherit life everlasting within themselves, but partake of everlasting death. He who loves physical life, endeavouring to maintain same at any cost, shall lose the everlasting life of the soul with the early end of physical life. But he who flees physical life shall gain everlasting life of the soul. This mark well. But let anyone desiring to put a question do so, and I shall answer him. Says the centurion, Lord and Master, what more could we ask you about, we know, and feel who you are? What we need to do, we know, seeing the necessity thereof. We also know and sense it deeply, that you have eternal life in you, and can and will give it to any person who lives and acts in accordance with your word. To know more would be unnecessary for us humans. The more, since we can, in your name, through living faith, even heal the sick, as one of your disciples assured me. For such unexpected and eternal grace, we owe you eternal thanks, and give you the most faithful assurance that you have erected for yourself an eternal shrine of remembrance which not infernal power or timeless storms can erase. And now that it has gotten quite late into the night, we might take our rest, but not that I insist upon it, although I shall yet have to personally check out my team. Say I, let that be, because, like yesterday, all is in the best of order but I shall myself watch past the middle of night, and you shall see that our staying behind shall not be for nothing. Travellers from Jerusalem shall still be arriving today, among them Pharisees and scribes who shall give us trouble. Says Ebal, Oh, what a shame! These could fittingly stay away. Such guests are usually the most unpleasant to me, 
for each of them demands as much attention as any hundred strangers who pay their dues, whilst the former want everything for free and yet not be satisfied, especially when demonstrably travelling on temple business. Ah, Lord, here you told me no joyful thing. Ah, ah, what preparations should be undertaken here? Say I, don't be troubled. The larder and cellar are full. Accommodation for hundreds has already been taken care of long since, and nothing more is required. They were dispatched to Nazareth from Jerusalem on my account, but finding me here, they shall not get to Nazareth. You shall all be offended by them tomorrow, but I shall serve them up pure wine on my part to the extent that they shall leave this place even tomorrow, full of gall and rage. Says Ebal, Then, however, we shall have the devil on our neck, for they shall bear us witness in the temple that shall be miserable and shameful. Say I, It shall be arranged for them, not saying much at home. This my explanation was followed by a quiet period, where all in the chamber kept quiet, but were busy in their hearts.